Hi, welcome to Myers ASMR. How are you doing? I'm so glad you're here. I've been waiting for you. Well, I'm kind of hungry, so before I get into today's story time, I have to take a few bites of my croissant french toast, which I just made. Hopefully it's still piping hot, so indulge me a bit. Let me dig in a little bit, okay? And then I'll get right to the story time. a little burnt. I like to make sure the egg is done. Mmm, so good. Why don't I do my nails, you say? Because <clears throat> I ain't that kind of chick. I used to upkeep them. Now, I just don't want to be bothered and when they chip, when the polish chips, it just looks terrible, so. And then putting that chemical on my skin, that polish remover, I don't want to keep doing that. So, anyways. So, <clears throat> we're going to pick up where we left off. Talking about AI and the future. Let me see, what is the title of this chapter? This chapter is entitled... Artificial General Intelligence, or AGI. At what point and in what context in the technology's evolution it should be subject to internationally negotiated restrictions is another essential subject of debate. If attempted too early, the technology may be stymied or there may be incentives to conceal its capabilities. 
If delayed too long, it may have damaging consequences, particularly in military contexts. The challenge is compounded by the difficulty of designing effective verification regimes for a technology that is ethereal, opaque, and easily distributed. Official negotiators will inevitably be governments, but forums need to be created for technologists, ethicists, and corporations, the corporations creating and operating AIs, and others beyond these fields. For societies, the dilemmas AI raises are profound. Much of our social and political life now transpires on network platforms enabled by AI. This is especially the case for democracies, which depend upon these information spaces for the debate and discourse that form public opinion and confer legitimacy. Who or what institutions should define the technology's role? Who should regulate it? What role should be played by the individuals who use AI? The corporations that produce it. The governments of the societies that deploy it. As part of addressing such questions, we should seek ways to make it auditable, that is, to make its processes and conclusions both checkable and correctable. In turn, formulating corrections will depend upon the elaboration of principles responsive to AI's forms of perception and decision making, morality, volition, even causality do not map neatly onto a world of autonomous AIs. Versions of such questions arise for most other elements of society from transportation to finance to medicine. Consider AI's impact on social media. Through recent innovations, these platforms have rapidly come to host vital aspects of our communal lives. Twitter and Facebook highlighting limiting or outright banning content or individuals. All functions that, as we discussed in Chapter 4, depend on AI are testaments to their power. In particular, democratic nations will be increasingly challenged by the use of AI in the unilateral, often opaque promotional removal of content and concepts. Will it be possible to retain our agency as our social and political lives increasingly shift into domains curated by AI, domains that we can only navigate through reliance upon that curation? With the use of AI, to navigate masses of information comes the challenge of distortion, of AIs promoting the world humans instinctually prefer. In this domain are cognitive biases which AIs can readily magnify, echo. And with those reverberations, with that multiplicity of choice coupled with the power to select and screen, misinformation proliferates. Social media companies do not run news feeds to promote extreme and violent political polarization, but it is self-evident that these services have not resulted in the maximization of enlightened discourse. AI, free information and independent thought. What then should our relationship with AI be? Should it be cabined, empowered, or a partner in governing these spaces. That the distribution of certain information and even more so deliberate disinformation can damage, divide, and incite is beyond dispute. Some limits are needed, yet the alacrity with which harmful information is now decried, combated, and suppressed should also prompt reflection. In a free society, the definitions of harmful and disinformation should not be the purview of corporations alone. But if they are entrusted to a government panel or agency, that body should operate according to defined public standards and through verifiable processes in order not to be subject to exploitation by those in power. If they are entrusted to an AI algorithm, the objective function, learning decisions, and actions of that algorithm must be clear and subject to external review and at least some form of human appeal. 
Naturally, the answers will vary across societies. Some may emphasize free speech, possibly differently based on their relative understandings of individual expression and may thus limit AI's role in moderating content. Each society will choose what it values, perhaps resulting in complex relations with operators of transnational network platforms. AI is porous. It learns from humans, even as we design and shape it. Thus, not only will each society's choices vary, so too will each society's relationships with AI. Its perception of AI and the patterns that its AIs imitate and learn from human teachers. Nevertheless, the quest for facts and truth should not lead societies to experience life through a filter whose contours are undisclosed and untestable. The spontaneous experience of reality in all its contradiction and complexity is an important aspect of the human condition even when it leads to inefficiency or error. AI and International Order Globally, myriad questions demand answers. How can AI network platforms be regulated without inciting tensions among countries concerned about their security implications? Will such network platforms erode traditional concepts of state sovereignty? Will the resulting changes impose a polarity on the world not known since the collapse of the Soviet Union? Will small nations object? Will efforts to mediate such consequences succeed? Or have any hope of success at all? As <clears throat> AI's capabilities continue to increase, defining humanity's role in partnership with it will be ever more important and complicated. One can contemplate a world in which humans defer to AI to an ever greater degree over issues of ever increasing magnitude. In a world in which an opponent successfully deploys AI, could leaders defending against it responsibly decide not to deploy their own, even if they were unsure what evolution that deployment would portend? And if the AI possessed a superior ability to recommend a course of action, could policymakers reasonably refuse even if the course of action entailed sacrifice of some magnitude? For what human could know whether the sacrifice was essential to victory? And if it was, would the policymaker truly wish to gainsay it? In other words, we may have no choice but to foster AI, but we also have a duty to shape it in a way that is compatible with a human future. Imperfection is one of the most enduring aspects of human experience, especially of leadership. Often policymakers are distracted by parochial concerns. Sometimes they act on the basis of faulty assumptions. Other times they act out of pure emotion, still. Other times ideology warps their vision. Whatever strategies emerge to structure the human AI partnership they must accommodate. If AI displays superhuman capabilities in some areas, their use must be assimilable into imperfect human concepts. In the security realm, AI-enabled systems will be so responsive that adversaries may attempt to attack before the systems are operational. The result may be an inherently destabilizing situation comparable to the one created by nuclear weapons. Yet, nuclear weapons are situated in an international framework of security and arms control concepts developed over decades by governments, scientists, strategists, and ethicists subject to refinement, debate, and negotiation. AI and cyber weapons have no comparable framework. Indeed, governments may be reluctant to acknowledge their existence. Nations and probably technology companies need to agree on how they will coexist with weaponized AI. 
The diffusion of AI through government's defense functions will alter international equilibrium and the calculations that have largely sustained it in our era. Nuclear weapons are costly and, because of their size and structure, difficult to conceal. AI, on the other hand, runs on widely available computers. Because of the expertise and computing resources needed to train machine learning models, creating an AI requires the resources of large companies or nation states. Because the application of AIs is conducted on relatively small computers, AI will be broadly available, including in ways not intended. <clears throat> Will AI-enabled weapons ultimately be available to anyone with a laptop, a connection to the internet, and an ability to navigate its dark elements? Will governments empower loosely affiliated or unaffiliated actors to use AI to harass their opponents? Will terrorists engineer AI attacks? Will they be able to falsely attribute them to states or other actors. Diplomacy, which used to be conducted in an organized, predictable arena, will have vast ranges of both information and operation. The previously sharp lines drawn by geography and language will continue to dissolve. AI translators will facilitate speech, uninsulated by the tempting effect of the cultural familiarity that comes with linguistic study. AI-enabled network platforms will promote communication across borders. Moreover, hacking and disinformation will continue to distort perception and evaluation. As complexity increases, the formulation of implementable agreements with predictable outcomes will grow more difficult. The grafting of AI functionality onto cyber weapons deepens this dilemma. Humanity sidestepped the nuclear paradox by sharply distinguishing between conventional forces deemed reconcilable with traditional strategy and nuclear weapons deemed exceptional. Where nuclear weapons applied force bluntly, conventional forces were discriminating, but cyber weapons, which are capable of both discrimination and massive destruction, erase this barrier. As AI is mapped onto them, these weapons become more unpredictable and potentially more destructive. Simultaneously, as they move through networks, these weapons defy attribution. They also defy detection, unlike nuclear weapons. They may be carried on thumb drives and facilitate diffusion. And in some forms, they can, once deployed, be difficult to control, particularly given AI's dynamic and emergent nature. <coughs> well, I'm hungry for another bite of my amazing croissant French toast. People, let's be responsible with all technology and only use it for the greatest good. Yeah, there are consequences to everything in all realms. The physical realm is not all there is. Even if someone escapes the law, I don't feel that they escape spiritual consequences. Spiritual consequences can be the worst. Because negativity can cause disease. Take care.
care of yourselves. Watch what you do. It's just not worth it to harm others. I mean, in addition to the harm you do to yourself. So freaking good. I just want to say something about my shirt. I am not sponsored by Puma or by anybody. The day I become sponsored by somebody, you will know. Because I will proudly and gladly tell you. <coughs> Puma has been my brand for probably over 20 years. So pretty much I'm always going to the gym. <laughs> so that's what it's about pretty much all of my gym well most of my gym gear is Puma sneakers my backpack my sweatpants yeah t-shirts even my socks Puma down to the socks I just love it I love cats so anyways I just had to explain that in case you're wondering, why is she always wearing Puma in her videos? Because I'm always going to the gym, that's all. It's just easier to just get my gear on for the day. You know, because motion creates emotion. Once I put on my gym clothes, I'm pretty much in state. Then it doesn't feel like this big chore, like, oh God, I gotta go. Like, just putting on my gear gets me it gets the momentum going and I'm pretty like ready like oorah you know what I mean so that's all but hey if you want to see me in nicer clothes donate to the cause donate to the cause I will gladly gladly showcase your brand as long as it aligns, you know, with me and what I'm about, and I like it, but most likely, you got something great, and you want me to show it on my channel, or taste it, or wear it, or whatever, talk about it, I'm open to the discussion. Hey, you can always donate to my Cash App, like and subscribe. Catch me in the next video and may you find lasting happiness. Bye.